So I was actually home to watch the main event. So I said, hey, you know, nothing else is on TV. Why not do a review about it? So I'm watching main event. And it only takes them five minutes to do something totally absurd and fucked up. So, you know, they do their normal shit. Um, they play a video package of Cesaro. So, Cesaro comes out. And he says, you know, it's a little short video. Nothing too impressive, of course. You know, he's only been there so long. And, you know, he has yet to really have a very good standout match. So, you know, it, it would be wise to just keep that quiet. You know, if you want to do your little video, that's okay. You know, it was impressive when he picked up Brodus Clay. So show that. So they do. And then, when he's coming out, he cuts a promo on his way to the ring. And he says, that was just, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he said a cheesy and to a direct quote music video that was thrown together in a couple of minutes. Do are you fucking serious? That, that That's exactly what it was. But you don't say that. You know how pathetic it is when they're actually joking about, you know, how bad they are? You don't, you know, emphasize your weaknesses. You know? Like, it's kind of like, you know how Johnny Cash is not a great singer? He mostly talks through most of the songs. It's his, you know, it's his, like, uh tone of voice that made him so popular but you don't hear him saying I can't really sing I'm just a fancy talker you know you just don't emphasize weaknesses it doesn't make any sense it's not good for business it's not good for business and it certainly was not good for business tonight and I'm not gonna say this is the reason why the ratings are so low but it just shows that this is just one of the many fucking problems with WWE. You know, it's you know it's great. It's you know, it's great to have a sense of humor, be self-deprecating. You know, you you have the ability to make fun of yourself. But the thing is, not on a wrestling program. You know what I mean? That would be like the announcer saying, "Oh, you know, this is some great action, but it's fake." You know, they're not gonna say that. You know, they're not gonna be, "Oh, look how fake that was." You know, you're you're not gonna say that. You know, like when Booker T kicks someone in the gut and they stay hunched over. You know, for, for like a fucking hour while he delivers the kick to the back of the head. Yeah, it looks fake as shit. But you don't say, oh my god, Booker T's finisher looks fake. You don't hear JR screaming that. I mean, come on. You know, so anyway, then they play the video package for Kali before he comes out. And, you know, it's funny. They mention in the video he's a former world champion. But they don't show his epic path of destruction in 2006 when he was crushing the Undertaker's head with that fucking head vice. You know when he, you know he was never a great wrestler. I hated, I hate fucking Kyle Lee. This guy with gigantism, so fucking cheesy and corny and just, you know, oh my God, you know he, he was at least a little bit tougher in 06 when they first introduced him. But he killed somebody in the fucking ring. He's a fucking murderer. You know, he was wrestling for a couple of years and he already fucking killed somebody because he's such a big fucking goof. You know, it's, nobody fucking talks about this in the YWC because we have to respect the wrestlers. But come on, he fucking killed somebody. I mean, he's not like Ben Y. I mean, he was an accident, but still, he's a fucking goof. So they showed a video. They don't even show anything from his world title reign when he was actually tougher before his uh, dancing around like a big goof. I mean, it's just like so totally unbelievable. I mean, no one's gonna find that man attractive. So why are they making like a piece of ass like Natalia? I don't seem like Natalia's like super hot, but she's pretty good. I fuck her, yeah. You know, I give her the D. But the thing is, you know, um, no one's gonna find him attractive, and this just makes Natalia look bad. And to top it all off, they do a little promo. Well, you know, she's asking him questions. Oh, did you carve up? Oh, you know, did, did you do this? Did you do that? And, and Hornswoggle's answering for him because he could barely talk because of the gigantism and, and, and shit like that. You know, and, and then, you know, he could barely understand what he's saying when he cuts them off. And Natalia, they forced Natalia to say that she, that Kali reminds her the, uh, of uh, fucking Bret Hart. Are you serious? Did they really say Bret Hart and Kali's name in the same sentence? What the fuck is wrong with them? Bret Hart, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Great Kali, one of the shittiest fucking wrestlers of all time. And then, 
You put their names together in the same sentence? What else did Vince McMahon just blow his fucking brains out? Right now, if he's going to do that fucking comparison, that you're not going to get Kali over that way. I, I mean, maybe you're going to fool some fucking half-retarded-ass children out there, PG era fucking marks, PG motherfuckers, but you know what? You ain't going to fool me. You know? Oh, yeah, can you just imagine me sitting there? Uh, Natasha's like, oh, yeah, WWE said it, so it must be true. I know there's actually going to be a couple of people who are going to say, you know what? Oh, you know, come on, Brett. You know, Kali's not that bad. I guess maybe he's the Bret Hart of the big men. Shut the fuck up if you're going to say shit like that. And you know what? You know, you might say, where are you getting that obscure, you know, uh, statement from? People have said it in the comment board. Shit like that. They like to twist words around to make WWE look good. Oh, there's an explanation for everything. You know what? Well, what's the explanation that they got a two point fucking two? Fuck you. Yeah, anyway, so the match is on and it's boring as fucking shit. He's working the leg. What else could he fucking do? I mean, there's only so much he could do to Kyle. He's just a big fucking goof. You know, Cesaro's lucky that he got out of there alive. You know, because I remember a couple of years ago, one guy did. So, you know, he's lucky that he fucking got out of there with his fucking health. And this shit is not working. They've really toned down his style from ROH. You know, back when he was the uh, fucking, um, what the hell was his name? Uh, Claudio Castanola. I almost forgot for a minute. You know, I was a big fan of him. When he was in Kings of Wrestling with Chris Hero and they did that invasion storyline on CCW. Nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking about. But, you know, anyway, it was awesome for, you know, when he was in the indies. But the thing was that they've toned him down because praise me here on shit like that. And the thing is, what they've done to get him over is suddenly he's become a throwback. Oh, he's a throwback. So they they take off his fucking elbow pads. They put some weird-looking thigh pads on him that he uses in rugby. Uh, like, and, and all of a sudden, he starts sleeping on the fucking floor like a goddamn weirdo. Who the fuck sleeps on the goddamn floor? What do you think mattresses are for? Did he ever see a sleepies? You know, a, a, a certain perfect sleeper, all those sh fucking sheep in the commercials, that doesn't mean anything to him. I mean, buy a fucking mattress. I mean, he's just a fucking bold, bold ass weirdo. Premature, bold weirdo. They turned him from, you know, a cool guy where he used to go, hey, in the ring, it was, you know, it was cool, he was cocky. I loved it, you know, the whole invasion thing that they had in ROH. And then they just turned him into a fucking purse carrying weirdo. Fucking bullshit. I mean, come on, they have to ruin every single fucking wrestler that comes through the WWE? Can anybody maintain a sense of credibility? No! This is fucking WWE! And if you don't do what Vince McMahon says, you're fired! You gotta, you gotta wrestle shitty, you gotta act shitty, you gotta, you know, uh, I don't even know, you know? Uh, uh, fucking shit! Just shit all around! You know what I mean? It's like, uh, turn on the TV and... All you see is just fucking watered down bullshit. Anyway, so he's attacking a leg the whole match. It's very, very boring. But I guess he got to do, you know, whatever he could do to him. The end was good, though. Him picking up Kali and slamming him fucking down with the uh, neutralizer was pretty damn impressive. This guy's fucking strong. And Kali didn't even jump for that shit. So I gotta say, I was impressed. The only problem... We had to watch 20 minutes of a boring fucking match to get to one good spot. I'm not going to recommend the match for one good spot. I mean, just fucking watch the three-minute clip they're going to upload on Fan Nation. Don't even bother watching the fucking match because you will fall asleep and then you'll fucking miss the spot. What's the point? If you're just going to fucking fall asleep and miss the goddamn spot anyway. So anyway, then uh, it's, it's, it's time for uh, Kofi Kingston's interview. Uh, he says that, you know, Barrett, you know, got lucky. And, um, you know, he, that's the only time that he could beat him. Barrett comes out and says that, you know, he's going to beat everybody. So he puts himself in a gauntlet match. First opponent is uh, fucking Yoshitatsu. Yoshitatsu does some, uh, some, uh, some ninja shit. And then he just downs him with a fucking punch. Obviously, this was taken from Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, when... There, he's doing all that fancy stuff with the, the fucking Turkish knife. And then he just, uh, you know, he, he fucking shoots him with the gun. Uh, but the thing is, <laughs> I'm not fucking buying that a single punch from Wade fucking Barrett 
could put down any man. I, I mean, the punch wasn't even stiff. It was like the fakest looking punch ever. And he got beat by it. So, you know, it's, I don't give a fucking shit about Yoshitatsu. You know, but the thing is, it's like, you know, Yoshitatsu's got some talent. I'll say that, you know, he, I, I remember back in ECW, what was it, like in 08 or some shit, that he was having some pretty decent matches. But all that aside, you know, even for a job to get beat by a punch, that's just fucking just unbelievably embarrassing. And it looks fucking fake. Then we got our next one now. It's JTG. And this guy actually does a couple of moves. It's a drop kick or some other fucking shit. Who gives a shit? He beats him with the fucking elbow. Then Justin Gabriel comes out. And Gabriel is, you know, he's the king of the jobbers. So he obviously gets more offense than the rest of them. You know, the thing is, Justin Gabriel is great. I've already said in my videos, I fucking love him. And if you used to watch NXT, if you were as fucking... Just, you know, pathetic when it comes to wrestling. It's so addicted, even though it's shitty that you had to watch everything. I watched NXT, you know, like, one of the last couple of episodes. He had this match with Heat Slayer, and it went, like, 20 minutes, and it was fucking great. If only they could show the audience that shit. Because the only problem was that match was on the internet. He hasn't had a decent match that's aired on TV. That's the problem. But the thing is, you know, how can you get anybody invested in someone like Gabriel? Say he was to get that push that they talked about a couple of months back and canceled out of the blue. If he got the title, what would that do? Would anybody fucking give a shit? No, they wouldn't. It wouldn't add to any ratings because he doesn't know how to cut a fucking promo worth the shit. You know, he's just a guy with a weird ass haircut. That's all it is. And, you know, some people on Twitter compare him to a, a Twilight character. You know, that, that ain't enough shit to work with. You gotta give him more. So the thing is, you know, why don't they fucking work with him to allow him to cut promos? Because God knows he actually has more athletic ability than fucking Kofi Kingston. This guy makes Kofi Kingston look like a fucking uh, douche. So the thing is, you know, if like at least if he had a little like fucking taunt or something like Kofi Kingston, Kingston can't fucking talk, but he's got the boo 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 that that retarded hand gesture. That, you know, kind of got him over with the kids at least. And a couple of fucking uh, PG motherfuckers here in the YWC. You know, uh, so all that that's all they needed to do. I mean, you don't necessarily have to talk to get over. You know, um, so they could do something with him. He gets beat with the elbow. And that was a pretty good stretch between Barrett and Gabriel. Not great or anything, but it was okay. It was passable. Definitely better than that fucking Kyle Lee match, I'll tell you that much. And so then, you know, I knew it was so predictable. I, I, I mean, you just knew that Kofi was going to come out at the end, you know, and, and he was at ringside and he pops up and all of a sudden he beats him in two minutes, making Barrett look weak. I guess he can make the argument that, you know, he wrestled for like over 10 minutes. So, you know, he was weakened by the other jobbers. But, you know, if you're building a new champion... Are you really going to have him just lose like the like almost the very next night? You know, two days ago. Whatever. But the thing is, he just fucking won the belt. So you're going to fucking job him out right? I don't give two shits about Wade Barrett. I think he fucking sucks. The gimmick's not working. But holy fucking shit, you're going to job him out already? He just won the fucking belt. Can he have some credibility at least? I mean, come on. I mean, you know, just like run with it. A, a little bit, you know, whenever they, they, they never want to commit to anything, they just gotta, you know, it's a shitty idea to give, give Barrett the title, you know, but, but uh, I mean, if you're gonna do something, at least commit to it, you have him with this whole fucking thing, they talk about during the match that, you know, you slashed in the back, they show you this scar for the first time, I didn't even notice that shit, you know, that is pretty tough, but do you think that maybe, you know, they're talking about, like, how he's a real fire and, and everything. They don't, he's so constricted in the ring. And, you know, they, they just have him, like, lose. Cause, like, they don't even give him any credibility. Why not let him have some credibility by letting him do a couple of violent shit? If he were to hit somebody in the head with a chair for the first time in fucking years, maybe... People might give a shit about Wade Barrett, but they're too fucking pussy to take any ideas like that and put them into practice. Holy fucking shit. You know, like, there was some moments that I enjoyed during this show, 
but for the most part, it fucking sucked. I mean, what a horrible ass show this is. I don't even know why I bother watching. It's not really even consequential to the rest of uh, fucking WWE. They, they mention it for like two seconds on Raw, and that's about it. It's the fucking C show. You, I never thought that anything could get lower than SmackDown. This shit's like just a little bit above Superstars because it's actually on fucking TV. But uh, it shouldn't be on fucking TV. Why the fuck? I keep saying this so every time I review this shit. Why do they need another fucking show when their other two shows suck dick? And then their pay-per-views suck even more dick. I mean, holy fucking shit. I mean, why overexpose WWE if they've already been exposed as being fucking shitty? I mean, holy crap. That's like, a, you know, that, that's like exposing a girl with really, like, with a flat chest. You know, no one wants to see that. You know, what's the point of all that overexposure if you ain't going to get the goods? You know what I mean? Yeah. 